so there's a there's a line in in my slides. I'm a compulsive builder, so that that explains a lot of things. I um, my, my my wife in particular, she's really mad at me, and she can't stand me because every day I come up with five different ideas of things we can do, and then I try to do them, which is kind of a bit um, unnerving for for my wife. So um, the clicker clicker does work. So I'll I'll be honest. When I started to write this, when I created this slide. Um, that was almost the end of, of, um, of my presentation because I started to look at myself and the question became really philosophical. I started to question myself, who am I really? And then I completely forgot about the things that I was meant to be working on. Um, I guess why I'm talking here today is that the fact that I created mode security and I presented about mode security at the very first um, OWASP chapter meeting. I'm very uh, flattered that you guys, well, at least some people here, consider me to, to be the founder of OWASP London. I most definitely am not. I just show up on the day. I did run the chapter a couple of years later and just tried to, tried to keep the fire going. And actually, it's quite, um, I'm chuffed that, you know, there's so many of you um, here in this room today. Actually, when I was doing things, if we could get 40 people, I mean, that, would, uh, that was something I would consider a success. So to see some 250 people here, that's this fantastic. So keep it up. Anyway, I did a quite a lot of things after. As I said, I'm a compulsive builder. So um, SSL Labs is a thing that a lot of you may be familiar with because it became eventually ended up being quite uh, useful and popular. Then I went on to create something called Hardinize, which is very similar. If you haven't seen it, you should check it out. Hardinize.com is free. It's very much in the same vein as SSL Labs. You go there, input your domain name, and we will test everything from your DNS, email, TLS, PKI, web application security, and, and so on and so forth. I write books, and now I'm a chief scientist at Redshift. So what I'd like to talk about today is basically, it's in, in some ways, it's going to be a personal story. In some other ways, it's going to be, um, I feel quite old, but uh, you know, I've been on this journey of creating an open source project, starting something. And I remember those days, it was very exciting. And I thought, oh, I had an opportunity to do something exciting and something different. And it succeeded in some ways and didn't succeed in some other ways. And I thought maybe on the 20th anniversary, maybe 22nd anniversary of more security, it would be you know, useful to go back and see if there are any, some lessons. Uh, to see. Uh, this is very timely as well because just a couple of months ago, maybe even less than a month, uh, actually Trustwave, the, the most recent owner of Mod Security, transferred ownership to OWASP. So OWASP actually owns the code I originally created 22 years ago, which is kind of very circular, isn't it? Because I was, here, I was kind of at the OWASP London chapter meeting 20 years ago. So, you know, we're kind of um, in a running ground and uh, a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to skip over quite a few slides, but if you think uh, web application security is bad today, you should have seen it in 2002. And it, uh, I, I think it's pretty much safe to say that no one really knew about um, cross scripting. Pretty much every application was vulnerable to cross scripting, and nobody knew about the SQL injection. So for me, the context was I was, I was in charge of a development team, uh, and we were working on web applications, and I was really unhappy. And famously, I, I was used to saying I had trouble sleeping at night because I was ultimately responsible. But I know I knew that there were there were a bunch of people there, and I, you know, who weren't quite up to date. And no one was actually, to be honest. In those days, we had, we didn't really know um, a lot of the things. So I thought, well, maybe there's something I can do about this. Um, and uh, this is where the the line. I think I may have missed one slide. There's a slight lag on on the clicker, so I have to wait about five seconds until it changes, um, if it changes. Anyway, there was one slide there, but this is the first ever. So for the purposes of this talk, I just went and collected a bunch of screenshots to see what things looked like. This is the first ever mod security um, website. And I started at some point in 2002. I don't really know. The first public record is November 2002. And then um, I, I started, things started to uh, basically uh, kind of go on and on. Actually, at the time, those of you, who, I think the, the, the clicker is definitely wonky. Um, those of you who may, be, uh, may remember the time, back in the day, the, the question of open security and how you commercialize it, that was a very much an open thing. And there was a, actually, there was one company called JBoss. And JBoss were in the, in the business of selling open source support. 
and it was all around their uh, suite of products which are mainly Java application servers. So there I was. Basically, I was here in Britain in 2004. Um, I had no job. Um, I had a, a work permit. I had no job. And I made a leap of faith and decided to start this open source project, um, thinking that I, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out as I go along. And I looked at JBoss, and JBoss made something like 60, 65 million in a year. And they, they were sold to Red Hat for, I don't know, 300 million or something like that. So I did what you were supposed to do. I started a business, created this is a, a very nice, pretty website. And I kind of figured out um, that I would uh, figure out the business model as, as I go along. By the way, if you, if you meet me afterwards, and if you find me afterwards, I can give you a master class of choosing bad names for your products and companies. Uh, Thinking Stone is that company. Um, we've heard it called uh, Sinking Stone or even Stinky Stone. So yeah. <laughs> by the way, if you think that's bad, if you think about mod security, by the way, if you don't know, the reason mod security is called mod security is because of the MOD. Uh, that's the standard prefix all Apache modules use. So it stands for module. And then I figured my module has something to do with security, so I'm going to call it that. Unfortunately, I, and to my defense, I was fairly fresh back then. In this country, MOD has a very specific meaning and stands for the Ministry of Defense. And that got a lot of people confused. So I will tell you that at one point, I got a publication uh, to my home address, addressed to technical director of the Ministry of Defense. I wish I kept it. It, it would be a very nice memento anyway. And I would show up at conferences, and they would see mod security, and they would start to, to talk shop to me like I was one of them, which I, I most definitely was not. Anyhow, I'll see if the clicker is working so I can kind of advance. And we're going back. It's, it's very slow. Or I can just improvise, maybe. Okay, well, this is a data sheet. This is the first. I'm just going to speed up and talk about interesting things. This is the, the website. We did everything well. And here we are. We are there. I was on the meeting, and I just show up, showed up, drank a pint of uh, beer, and, and presented. And, and by this time, I was kind of pitching my business and was trying to make it work. And what eventually happened is Mod Security did solve a niche. And I ended up having quite a quite a few users, and there were, uh, there were a lot of happy users. Um, one thing I learned later on, when, because uh, most security was eventually acquired, it's really important for the acquisition that you have a good record of how many users you actually uh, have. Because what happened is that uh, as they were doing their due diligence, when they realized that I actually don't have any customers, then uh, my wife and I were uh, in, in taking a walk outside, and we were convinced you know, it, it, it wasn't going to happen. The, the acquisition was going to kind of be, be cancelled. Um, and uh, thankfully, that didn't happen. We didn't have good download numbers. And what we also did, we actually allowed Mosquito to be distributed freely because open source did it is. It was in Debian. It was in Red Hat, Werner. So people were getting it from the operating system, and it, we couldn't really prove that we had how many tens of thousands of users and so on and so forth. So there was one really nice slide where it says we only had a handful of customers. Um, there's one company that you know all, has a bad rep, and that's Oracle. And people, a lot of people don't like Oracle. I will tell you that Oracle is the only company that licensed most security from us to include it with their own Apache distribution. And actually, that money at that time wasn't a huge amount, but meant a lot to us, because it was by far the biggest chunk of revenue we've had. Anyway, a big breakthrough came when uh, we participated in, in a kind of uh, bake-off against, in, in the, if you, you have to realize, back then, it was just me. Um, and I, I went uh, to compete with, I have this, actually, there's another slide. So, um, this goes back and forth. I don't know what. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. So what actually happened is that um, there was a forester uh, who are analysts. They run a, a competitive analysis of a bunch of web application files. And actually, Mod Security came, um, obviously, by far the most popular. And also, but it was praised for kind of strategic uh, um, direction and, and whatnot. 
what mod security was different because it was a very it was a precision tool. A lot of web application files at the time, I don't know if today, they're just black boxes. And maybe they do something, maybe they don't. With most security, it's a difficult tool to use. You have to tell it exactly what you want. But it will do exactly what you tell it to do. So if you know what you're doing, it's going to be perfect. And it's not a black box. And that was a very fresh approach. I don't know if things have changed. In any case, one of the vendors um, who, was, who were also in the competition, they scored poorly, poorer than I did. And they had money I didn't. So um, a couple of months later, Bridge Security acquired uh, my company. And that was kind of the end of uh, kind of my company thinking stone and so on and so forth. So um, the job, I'm just going to keep talking with all the slides and see, see what I, and then if these slides catch up, I'll, I'll <laughs> tell you what they're about. Um, that actually made things easier later on because I was no longer alone. And the company provided additional resources. And here they are. Um, <laughs> Offers is off. Um, he was actually instrumental in the acquisition itself. He, he's the one, he was the one who believed in mod security. Brian joined as, as the, the primary developer. Ryan joined and worked on the core rule set, worked on the community. It, it was really nice as a sole founder, only a couple of years, to kind of be a part of um, you know, a group. And you, know, you don't have really uh, to fight uh, this fight alone. As it happens, every founder leaves after an acquisition. And you know, there are various reasons for that. I couldn't really, I, I think, uh, I, all, I, I generally struggle with my identity after my company is acquired. I've done a few of these, and uh, all this happens to you. You're very motivated, and then you're not, because you, you yearn for something, and then you get it. And then you, you sp I, I need a couple of months every time to figure out, OK, well, what now? Um, but I think I left mostly because I wasn't happy with the state of web application firewalls, because they were kind of turning to be more like intrusion detection systems where they were not precision tools, but they're just, oh, let's see, we'll throw everything at the rules and see what six. And I was fundamentally unhappy with that. I always believed in the use of web application firewalls for virtual patching, whereas you have a vulnerability, but it will take you a month to fix it, and you just write your rules, nice rules, robust rules, to defend, hold the fort until the time that you actually patch things. And I, wasn't, I didn't really want to participate in the industry. Anyway, I decided to leave. And, and by 2009, it will, will have been a few years anyway. So it, it's time uh, certainly for something new. I did leave a gift. Uh, I, I kind of see it as a gift to the community. I sat down and wrote the book. And I wrote down everything I knew about most security I wrote in the book. If you uh, know anything about um, uh, writing books, there's no money to make in this industry. Um, so it wasn't, definitely wasn't for money. This is a screenshot for the second edition, Christian Follini, who is a co co-lead of the core rule set in 2017, worked with me on the second edition because he was interested in, in that. I wasn't, so I just worked as an editor. Um, so, and, and then I, I, I went, to do, went to do other things. I think this is a point in my presentation where slides are going to be more important. Um, so let's see uh, if they're going to appear. Um, Yes, so the, a couple of other things happened. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go faster than, talk slower than the slides, because I, I, I need to use them as a cue. What happened then, breach security unfortunately didn't do very well. And then what happened is that uh, they were acquired by Trustwave. And a fantastic thing, thing happened right then. Trustwave actually relicensed more security under uh, Apache, the Apache software license, which was fantastic and a great improvement. Um, I chose GPL specifically because I thought there would be a case to, to build a business model around the fact that it's GPL, and if anyone wanted to bundle more security, they will have to use, get a commercial license from me. So obviously, I, I love open source, but you have to pay your bills. Uh, actually, um, on the day that we sold mod security, we were maxed out on all our credit cards. I keep telling everybody. It, it was one of those moments that you would typically see in a film. We had zero money. Actually, we were, we were negative. And I, I had a contract um, to get a job and, uh, ready. I just needed to sign it. And it was waiting to see. If, I, if the acquisition fell through, I would sign the contract. I never signed the contract. And, anyway. and then, um, then the core rule set was transferred to OWASP. And, uh, then Trustwave eventually decided to give up on more security and then trust, transferred as well the ownership of the trademark and the name and everything. And now it's all um, in, um, 
in, in, in OWASP. So prior to this slide, I had post-mortem on the, um, um, as, as kind of the next section, because this is the part where we kind of think, okay, some things went well, some things didn't go well. What, what are those? I think one thing that works is that mod security, at least version 2.0, 2.2.x, is ubiquitous and it's everywhere. It's a very useful tool and it's robust and it worked. So mod security, for better or worse, shaped the industry. I think the worst, worst part is, for me, is that the rule language actually uh, looks like what it looks like because it's part of Apache and you have to fo follow the same syntax and everything else of the Apache web server. So I'm a little, a little bit sad that a lot of other people who have nothing to do with Apache anymore still have to follow this very obscure syntax and it's, it's not really very, very easy to use. We had to jump um, um, you know, through a lot of hoops to make sure that we abuse the available syntax and everything else uh, so that to make uh, things work. Another thing that, that worked really well is that uh, a community formed, but the community unfortunately didn't form around the, co the most security code base. It did form around the OS core rule, core rule set. And this is, the, uh, this is a credit to the people who kind of started this project and run it for many, very many years. I personally think this is the better part of what's left uh, it was being created by mod security, and this was the really exciting bit. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't happen my, while uh, during my time there, but you know, it's, it's never too late, and now um, it's um, uh, unified under OOPS. The other thing that I really liked is, even though none of the vendors actually wanted to be a part of the mod security community, there, there were no contributions to the source code at all. Uh, I know for a fact a lot of people, well, for some definition, they work a lot, with a lot used most security in their products. They were gateways and web application files with, with most security, bundling it technically illegally because the license wouldn't allow it, but no one really cared. I didn't bother chasing them. Um, unfortunately, we, we could have done something else. Interestingly enough, Cloudflare is a very big name. Uh, I, probably not a lot of people know they use most security to, to booster up their business. So they use booster up most security while they didn't have anything else. Eventually they built something better now. So I'm, I'm pretty happy in, in, um, in that sense. So this is the other slide about the core rule set. There's some things that didn't work and I'm not quite happy with. Um, and that's basically that mod security could have been much more. And I suppose it's my fault for leaving, and I'm, I, I would have probably taken it in a different direction, but I chose, it was my, my decision to leave, because um, there are many things that web application, open source web application files haven't uh, explored, like machine learning, focusing maybe on session monitoring, event monitoring, user tracking, uh, going more into business rules tracking. We haven't seen uh, like a nice uh, tool to aggregate various events, a user interface tool, so that you can, you can examine your events and you can work with them, visual editors to edit the rules and a bunch of other things that could have happened but didn't happen. But anyway, I, I mean, this, this is no one's fault, of course. It's basically a reflection of who we are and the communities we have. I don't want to end um, on a bad note, actually. I'm very proud of what's happened. Um, well, I don't like the word proud, but what's happened with mod security even with, with swords and everything, we have pushed the, the boundaries of human knowledge just a little bit in a very small way. So I saw an illustration uh, a while ago where the human knowledge is illustrated, like if this is a circle, and then this is all we know. And then when you do a PhD, you just make a tiny dent on, on, this, on this circle and you push this boundary of the knowledge. Well, that's what we are. We were just a little dent. We pushed a little bit. You can hardly see it, but you know, even when we made some mistakes, um, at least there's going to be new open source projects, uh, new companies who are going to learn from our security mistakes and do something um, that's better. And I think that's another slide here. Now, now it works. Open source worked and the code survived. Yeah, that's, I think that's a fantastic thing. Um, this is the bad thing. I think this, oh, it's almost worked there <laughs> for a second. But that's it. I don't really have any more slides. I think I have only uh, thank you very much, and if you have any questions, I'd love to, to talk to you. So there is one question on the slide, though. Um, Ivan, how do you continue to find time with supporting your open source repositories? 
Too many people take open source for granted without offering any support. Well, I don't really. I, I, I mean, so um, I think I've done my share of supporting open source, <laughs> if that's the only question. My, I've, I've changed. Um, so most security is the, the, the last thing I, I did is, is open source to, for no particular reason. But for the next project, for SSL Labs, I chose to make it free. Um, but it wasn't open source. And I don't know. There isn't a particular reason. Maybe because I like to work by myself. I, I know what I, I like. And if you want to participate in open source, you have to participate genuinely. You have to be part of a team. And takes that, to be honest, that takes much more effort. And sometimes, when you don't have a lot of time, you do what you can. And then if, if it can't be open source, at least it can be free. So all my things since have been free, um, SSL Labs and Hardenize. I think we're making, I'm making a lot of my books for free. Uh, some are not. Um, but I hope that answers that question. Excellent. I, I think for example, we, we shouldn't be making open source with an expectation that people give back. I think it's, uh, I prefer to think about it as expanding the boundaries of the, the knowledge of the human race and, and whatnot. And then if it's useful to someone, great. If not, that's great as well. Excellent. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>